Kelsey Russo, the athletic Donovan, mean, is this game at all? How is this game at all disappointing? We just think what you guys do what was at stake with this one. Um. I think it's more upsetting because, you know, we didn't finish. We didn't execute well defensively. Um, we're better than that. Um, I mean, both teams shot the hell out of the ball, but at the end of the day, you know, we're messing up coverages, different things. And, you know, that's what we pride ourselves on. We didn't really do a good job of that tonight. So um, it's good that we, I guess, you got it out of our system before the playoffs or whatever. But, you know, that... That's the most disappointing part. You know, we have we control our own destiny from here on out. We would have liked to do it tonight, but at the end of the day, you know, Jalen Brunson had a hell of a game. He's a hell of a player. He's been doing this, and, you know, we'll be better. You were talking about how, wow, it's like frustrating the lesson in all of this, and I know we've talked about that throughout all this the season, mm-hmm. but at this point in the season, having this lesson with knowing where you guys are at, like, how important was that? Um, I think it's even more important because the team we're probably going to see. Uh, obviously, we're missing people. They're missing people, but still the same competition, competitiveness, and you know, they play well. They did a lot of things well. They they played together in different ways, and you know, we'll be better. Did you see their physicality defensively change in the second half? Um, I just think the refs started calling it like it was a playoff game. I don't think they did anything differently, you know. And I think that's something that some of the guys have to just get used to at the end of the day, and you know. Understanding that certain things aren't going to go, you got to finish through contact. You can hit people, you can do different things, you can hold different areas. So, um, the certain things you just can't teach, um, and that's one of them. You know, I think that just comes with the experience. But, like I said, we'll be better. Um, we got to control, like I said, we control our own destiny, and we'll be better from here on up. Chris Fedor, Cleveland.com. Hey, Donovan, what made Jalen so difficult to, to guard today? Um, I mean, I've seen this for a year, I saw the same thing last year. Um, He's just shifty. He can get to his spots different ways. The biggest thing is, you know, he had 50, but he had nine assists, you know, at the end of the day. Um, that's that's the standout. You know, 50 is is great, you know, and that's, that's a lot to work to put in. But, you know, being able to get everybody else involved, I think that's what I took away the most uh, from that. You know, now he's not accountable just for – you know, 50 points, but at minimum 18 other points. Um, so that's that's the tough part, you know, that we just, that I look at and I'm like, all right, we could fix that. And then Mitchell Robinson only plays 22 minutes and has nine offensive rebounds. That's on all of us, not just Evan. We got to go in there and hit him. Um, and, you know, I got to give them credit. You know, they worked. Um, they did different things. Jaden had a lot of a game, but he got nine assists off. You know, we were doing different things that, like, I, I don't want to discredit 50 point performance that's on that's not you know what we hang our hat on but you know being able to have 50 as well as nine assists changes the complexity of the whole game and then anytime you guys play against the Knicks given how close you are in the standings people mm-hmm. are looking for things looking for clues how this team mm-hmm. is going to match up looking for takeaways mm-hmm. what do you take away from this loss um you know different things I won't share all of them with you um but you know I think First and foremost, I think, like I said, it opened our some guys' eyes, I think, you know, to the level of physicality, you know, the level of every possession. Um, I speak for myself and my mistakes. Um, we come out of a timeout, I give up a Josh Hart three. Um, changes it, and then they go and go on a little run. We got to call timeout. Changes the whole game. Um, end of the half, Mitchell Robinson gets a tip in, you know, I think it was the half or a quarter or whatever. Mitchell Robinson gets a tip in, you know, changes the complexity of the whole game. There's so many different things uh, down the line. Miscommunication between me and Mar. Jalen Brunson hits a three, you know, like that. Those are the little things, the little details that, you know, can happen. And, you know, like I said, we'll make those adjustments. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, we didn't have Jay, we didn't have Isaac. You know, we had guys that are capable, um, and we will be fine. Danny Cunningham, ESPN Cleveland. With how close the playoffs are to right now, does that add to the disappointment of a performance like this? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, obviously you want to all come out and play perfect and do things perfectly, but, you know, I did, it wasn't the case tonight. Um, I think you learn a lot more in a situation like this. I think we grow from this, um, even though the playoffs are right around the corner. Um, you know, but for us, we look back at it, get better, and, you know, like I said, we control our destiny and then go from there. Um, we'll probably see the guys in two weeks. This will be a good film session for us. Um, get in there, watch it, figure it out, get better at it. Um, that's all you can do. You can't sit here and say, oh, you know, they beat us by 14, you know, in game 70, whatever. This, we had a whole new series coming up, and we've got to be ready. As a leader on this team, how do you ensure that the disappointment doesn't linger? we got a game on Sunday. <laughs> um, I think that's that's the biggest thing, you know. Shake. This is – it hurts. 
you know, it sucks, but, you know, we have, like I said, we control our own destiny at this point. If we let this affect us for the last five, you know, we're going to be in bad shape. You know what I mean? So understanding that, you know, this is a loss. This isn't the playoffs. This isn't like, oh, one, we didn't lose home court. This is game 70, whatever. Um, coming in, we got to be ready to beat Indiana, who's a team that's hungry to make the play in. So um, that's that's where our focus is now, and we'll get better at this. We'll revisit this when the time ends, but right now we can't sit here and let this hang over our head. You know, even if we had won this game, you can't sit here and let this be in your head. You got to move on. We got to control. We got to control. We got to take care of business because the season's not over yet. And then when it comes time, we'll be, come back to this game and we'll figure it out. Daryl Ryder, 92, big fan. Um, <coughs> Don, I, I ask you because you have a habit of getting offensive rebounds just collectively as a unit tonight. It was like a one shot and done offense, just three offensive boards. I know you didn't have Jared, but I, I guess just why was it that type of a game for you on that end of the field? Uh, I think them, and I, I'm not making an excuse here, so them not having Julius Randle changes the pace of their group. Um, you know, obviously Jalen is does what he does, pushes the pace, but you have a kind of a mismatch with, with those two. Julius kind of is, you know, so now you have Obi hopping at the four who's running in transition. You got to run back. You have Quickly who's pushing the pace. You got to get back. So you have to kind of prioritize and shift your priorities at that point. Um, and you got to give them credit. You know, that lineup, you know, um, Quick, Obi, Hart, Jalen or, or and somebody I think it was Hardenstein like they they're running they're flying and that's a different case with Julius not to say it's a bad thing that's just how it is um, so that's that was the focus getting back and then we still didn't get back enough you know so there's different things like I said we can learn from and get better at but that's that would be the explanation because we just tried to focus on getting back in transition. You started off real high. I think you hit your first eight shots mm-hmm. um, and had 23 points in that first mm-hmm. quarter. What's it feel like when you're cooking like that wasn't enough to be honest with you hey Don and Nate Ulrich from the Beacon Journal um, what was the message you sent to you know some of the younger guys after the game if you in fact you to talk to them already um, understanding that this loss hurts feel it get upset about it and be ready to use it when the time comes um, little details that's what I, I said that this morning in my media session and little details hurt us tonight. You know, they executed different things, they little effort, different things. And, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say it's because we had guys out. We, like I said, we have guys that are capable, guys that have shown we're capable, and we just didn't execute. Um, so understand that, you know, this sucks you know, to feel this way, uh, this late in the season. But, you know, if we hang our head on this, we have no chance in the playoffs. You know what I mean? So keep your head up. Don't worry. Like, Worry about it in the right context, but don't let this linger because at the end of the day, it's a whole new ball game when the playoffs start. And, you know, there's so much we can take from this positive, negative, uh, constructive. Um, and, you know, we'll, re- we'll respond. We'll be better. Uh, but, you know, obviously it sucks and feel it in the moment. But we got a game on Sunday we got to be ready for. Uh, Alice, it's her last response. Um, despite today's loss, I know in the first beginning of quarters, you guys have like this chemistry between all you guys where you're on, you're on a roll, DJ's on a roll, mm-hmm. Jetty's on a roll. Where does that come from? Where does that start? Um, you know, just playing off each other. You know, I knew that they were going to try and shift. You know, that's the core of their defense. That's why they're pretty good. And, you know, being able to get my shots off attacking. And then, you know, they're helping on. They're staying home with me. Darius gets in the action. Now you put Jetty in the action, who's shooting, who shot the ball really well tonight. Um, so there's different ways you can, you know, attack that. And, you know, it may look differently come playoff time. You know, as the second half, they started staying with me more. Stuff started opening, and opening up, um, you know. But I think the little things that, you know, little nuances of the game, being able to find those mistakes and, you know, um, pick a part of defense. We did a really good job of that, you know, at first. And, you know, we didn't really do too great of a job to end the game. And like I said, this is part of that film session. We'll get we'll get, get going and we'll figure it out. And, Last one. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. um, and tonight it was a Noche Latina for mm-hmm. the Cats. And I know that you're half Panamanian. Mm-hmm. Uh, what does that mean for you? How yeah, um, you know, it's it's funny. People always ask me, like, do I speak Spanish? And, you know, I I thought I was pretty solid as a kid, you know, being around baseball. My grandmother spoke it to me, you know, nonstop, and I was in honor Spanish. Um, so, you know, I've kind of lost it since then. But, you know, to have a night where you're honoring, you know, the Latino community, it's, it's great to be a part of that. It's great to have that. And, you know, um, 
gra- grandmother was first generation over here. Um, may she rest in peace. And, you know, I wear that chain, you know, in honor of her and what she's been able to do for myself and, you know, my family, my mom, my, my sister, um, you know, I'm not here without her, you know what I mean? You know, for her to take that risk and not knowing any English coming over here and, you know, laying the foundation, you know, for the Mitchell family. So, yeah. Last one. Yeah. Uh, Spencer Jeremy Carrick inside. Donovan, uh, given what we know about, you, know, you obviously land here, but there was a possibility uh-huh. of New York. Um, just, is there something poetic about the fact that, as you even said, like that could be the team you mm-hmm. ultimately see in the first round and how much does that motivate you? It's full, yeah. You came out pretty playing so hot in the first quarter, obviously, and three fouls kind of derailed that a little bit, but it seemed like you were really moving. Yeah, it's full circle. Um, you wouldn't want it any other way. You know, what kid wouldn't want to grow up and play against his hometown team in the playoffs? Um, you know, I like to try to move away from the summer. It happened. I'm here, and I'm glad to be here. Um, I don't, I'm pretty sure when I go to New York, I'm going to get asked the same <laughs> questions over and over again. But, you know, I'm glad to be a part of this group. I'm glad to be with this team. And, you know, I think, you know, for me personally, who wouldn't want it any other way? You know, I think it's a, it's a story ending. It's 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 not ending, but, like, it's a story storyline. I think it's something that's really special and near and dear to me, being able to play in a playoff game in front of my friends and family, um, a team that I grew up watching, you know, against the, you know, guy who's the assistant coach over there who kind of basically taught me everything I know at this point. So it's it's great, you know, and I'm, I'm excited for the challenge. Um, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun if that happens. All right, thanks,